Gentlemen, you were speaking in the session on revitalizing multilateralism through anticipatory science and diplomacy. Uh, Nikhil, multilateralism on the retreat in some regions, how do you see JESDA as helping to reverse this trend? In broad terms, the ups and downs of multilateral diplomacy follow the ups and downs of relations between the big powers. And clearly at this point in history, we are not seeing very good relations between the big powers. And as a result, multilateral diplomacy, especially in peace and security areas, is languishing. But there are a lot of areas where if we heard the voice of science much more strongly as to where our world is heading, the changes that are coming upon us, especially because of the leaps in technology, that would re-energize looking at issues, especially the human dimensions of the work we do in multilateral diplomacy, differently and with greater energy. Joel, trust in science is on the decline. How can JESTA help reverse that trend? Well, that's a big question. And, uh, you know, there is a big frustration within the science community. We provide solutions. Let's say the vaccine for COVID is the last one and 40% of the population in Switzerland doesn't take it. On the other side, we have alerted the, uh, the society that there is an issue with climate. And this goes 20 years back, and still we are not moving. So on one side, there is this frustration. On the other side, clearly we have to learn to communicate better at all levels, at the levels of people, at the levels of communities and at the levels of the nation. And this is where JESTA can play a role. And there are several initiatives that we have taken in that direction. So how can, for example, a scientists like yourself uh, better communicate with diplomats? And how can diplomats better communicate with scientists, would you say, Joel? So, you know, actually within the universities, we have learned to work in a very interdisciplinary manner. This is why we can produce products that are very effective. So we need to go one step beyond. We need to involve the diplomats. We need to involve the social scientists, the economists in our reflection. So what we need to do is to educate people that can both speak the language of scientists and of the diplomats in this, in this uh, case. Um, Nikhil, UNITAR is a training and research org organization. I mean, how can we train future leaders to be bilingual in both science and diplomacy? We have to first realize that uh, scientists don't deal directly with policy processes. They're often intermediaries, and these intermediaries are government representatives, diplomats, who take a much more active and direct part in policy processes. They are Sherpas who prepare leaders for their declarations and so many other things. So it's very important to get to this community and teach them what science is telling the world and make that a part of their preparations for their leadership to go and make policy. So there are stages in which we have to do this training and we must catch the right people and make them equipped to be able to talk intelligently and have intelligent policy making uh, which, on which the world really depends. Sometimes our policy making is shoddy, it's not fully uh, science driven, but we can change that only by getting those people who are going to be making that policy better equipped by learning and by capacity building. So I think we have to target the audience where we need to reach to be able to get them to have make more intelligent decisions, basically. Joel, you mentioned, of course, uh, the vaccine hesitancy here in Switzerland, even though they potentially have the two best vaccines, or at least those with the highest efficacy rates. So how can we build uh, or reinvigorate trust in science amongst citizens? So f first, through a dialogue, a much more intense dialogue, and explain that what we have been doing in this past year is just not coming out of the nowhere, that there was a long time investment in research, 20, 30 years back, that allowed to be ready when such a situation come. Uh, I want to mention another initiative that we just launched uh, between the University of Geneva and ETH Zurich um, to foster uh, the dialogue between diplomacy and uh, natural sciences. 
And so we will have a platform that is supported by Jesta, by the way, um, where people will meet and will exchange and will get a, this double education I was talking about before. This is just one example. We, we need to do that uh, in a much more proactive way in many other fields. We have in Switzerland a fantastic dual system uh, that could be a model uh, worldwide. Uh, and we need so not only to think about the academics, but as well as uh, about uh, uh, the um, vocational education, so that uh, there is much more exchange between the two worlds. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your thoughts on how diplomats and scientists can work together for the benefit of the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to you.